Welcome into the Cam and Strick podcast, episode number 49. Mm. Big what, boy. What is that? Mm. That means mm, cool. Andy. I mean, I've heard people tell me they think that Barry White is on the podcast because mm. all they ever hear is like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Bellman. Mm. Yeah. That's what I do, man. What are you doing? Chilling. Everything good? Yeah, I'm good. What's I'm going good. on? I got cool clothes on. I got pink, I don't know, green socks on. I got uh, gray shoes on. I got kind of gray pants on. I got black shirt. I got, I'm all fucked up. Can I talk to you about your car you're driving right now, by the way? I got my truck now, dick. You no, know, you're driving your mom's car. No, yesterday. I got my truck now, dick. Yesterday, di- you yeah, had your mom's car. Fucking embarrassing. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. I played in this show for 10 years. I'm popular in St. Louis. But am I, is it called vain? Am I vain? My truck starter got blown out, so I had to drive my fucking mom's little red, dinky-ass piece of fuck tr- car. I don't know what the fuck it was, but I look like a piece of shit in it. I went to Mentality. The girls made fun of me. Everywhere I go, I duck my head at the gas station. Am I vain? Is it vain? Is it... Are you going to answer this? Is it vain? I, I don't know what that means. Is it vain? What is that a mean? Song, there's a song to some chick... Uh, song a long time ago I was like You're so vain Am I vain I For know. being embarrassed well, With a shitty car I mean You're driving your mom's car It's embarrassing And you're like In your mid 30s Yeah I don't know What's going on I, with you. They live next to me My wife had to go to work Do I call my buddy up Who has to work And say Hey I know you're doing Concrete today Can I borrow your truck So I can do my podcast No you can't Cam I love you. Ask your fucking mom with her dinky red car. Is her car spotless? Yes. Oh, my God. Every old I lady. I spilled shoe everywhere in the not, fucking not thing. Not to call her an old lady, but every, every lady has the cleanest car. Clean as shit. I chewed over the fucking thing. I wore the brakes out. It's actually kind of cute to drive where I'm like, nye, nye. there's a little round roundabout. I'm like, woo. Nye, 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 nye. I'm like, cool. This is kind of cool. And then somebody looks at me. I'm like, oh, God, hide. Woo, do, 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 do. Almost getting a car accident. That's what I did. Could you quit chewing if you needed to? Like, is, are you are you addicted to it? Uh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Like, when you wake up, how long does it take Do for have, you to put a dip in? Uh, t- three minutes. Oh, really? That's good, that quickly? Well, yeah, then I'll chill for a bit, and I'll do my homework, and I'll get my coffee ready, and I'll mm-hmm. type my notes down, and i get ready for my show, I'll get ready for the podcast, da-da-da-da-da. Maybe I'll throw another chew in. I need to stop. That's it. I need to stop. So if there's any other sponsors out there, that want to help me stop chewing so I could look beautiful on these videos that we're doing now? Help me then. Reach out and be like, Cam, I got something for you. Here's an alternative. Hook me up and I'll do it and I'll pump your fucking tires up. Did you ever smoke cigarettes? Oh, all the time, dude. No, like from like an addiction standpoint. No, like not every morning. No, I don't and, get like, up and smoke, smoke a pack a day. I'm, no, no, no. I, okay. I, when I'm drinking, I'll smoke darts. I'm like, let me hit that bad boy. So I go to my buddies who smoke darts and I'll watch them smoke. I'm like, God, sound, that looks so soothing. Give me that fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Then I'll smoke it and I'll like lip it up like a piece of shit. <laughs> and then I'll like smoke, I suck it like a doobie. And then like, it, like it, you know, the guy's like, I don't fucking want this back. And then it's giving me the whole thing. So that's my routine. Okay. Um, what about manicures and pedicures? I want both of them. Where do you stand with this? I want both of them. I want to look good, baby. When I go and I'm cruising around, although I don't wear sandals like a pussy like you, I wear shoes, but I want my fucking feet to be good. What if Kate wants to suck my toes? I'm like, girl, what's up? Here you go. <laughs> and they're nice and clean for my wife. <laughs> Are you letting us, uh, giving us a glimpse into what you might be into? Oh, or? we're fucking down and dirty, dude, oh especially God. on Sundays. That's our dirty dude, days, Sundays. Cause... Look, if you want a clean relationship, if you want a sexy relationship, you got to pinpoint a day where you guys are both like chilling out and then you get down and dirty. She puts on something cute, you take a shower, you get a pedicure, a manicure, and she'll suck them toes. <laughs> um Okay, well, Father's Day is coming around the corner, so you know I was thinking about great maybe segue something I want for Father's great fucking, Day. Okay? I got my wife sucking my toes, and you're talking about fucking Father's Day. Okay, what? <laughs> I've never had a pedicure. Or well, a you mani- need one. You're wearing manicure. sandals. You look like a fucking dirt bag from House Springs. Dude. No offense to House Springs. I love you. I grew up there. And he looks like he's from House Springs, but he's from the poor part of Ladue. You don't like wearing flip flops? Fuck no. I could push you over this right now. This is the time of year, dude. This is Fuck what you that. wear. You wear flip flops in the you summer. You look like an asshole. You wear flip flops in the summer. Race me. Now, race me. You said you won't even go to a store to buy new shoes because you're embarrassed. Yes. At how bad you you sw- you sweat. Yes. Yes. But you'll go to a manicure or a pedicure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because they're cleaning it. So when I go to Lululemon and they start 
like measuring my feet. Lululemon <laughs> doesn't, they don't have shoes at no, the store. No, no, no. Let they? me explain. I go to Lululemon. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hi, girls. Hi, hi, Cam. How you doing? Here, let me, uh, let me measure from your foot to your waist. I'm like, girl, easy now, girl. My feet stank. My feet stank. Don't go near my feet. I'm going near your feet. I'm like, oh, God. And then I start sweating even more, and mm-hmm. I stink even more, Andy. And then I get fucking embarrassed, and I don't buy shit. Dude, we're putting out these videos now. Yeah. Of, like, you getting all animated, acting crazy, watching fights. Crazy. Looking like you're ready normal. to fight again. Well, we haven't put out one. Yeah, it looked pretty normal. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> good response from that. People like that. Yeah, I know they do. All the tough guys are like, I want to come on and explain my situation. Mm-hmm. Well, good. Come on, then. I want all y'all. I'm going to break this shit down. This isn't this isn't like petty bullshit, like fluffy, like, hey, what'd you do there? No, like, fuck, let me know what's up. How were you feeling? Were you amped up? How'd you do this? How was your grip? How'd you do? How'd you eat that punch? How'd you feel when you ate that punch? Did you go black? Did you go black? Did were you, you ever like, go black? Fuck. When did you go black? Every Give me fucking, an example when you went black. When Brian McGrath in the last fight, and when mm-hmm. he caught me in the back of the fucking head, you went black. I went black. And all of a sudden, I'm like, usually when people go black, meaning you, your, your whole mind goes black. You don't know where you're at. So the initial reaction is, I'm going to buckle. And I just don't. I, I, I force myself to stay to, on your to feet. stay on my feet. Yeah, man. From I was boxing, ask you yeah, I know, dude. I mean, going black like to it's me, not man, you easy. can't see. You don't know where you, you are. You don't know where you're at, and you figure it out. You stay on your feet, and you're like, okay, I know where I'm at now. Oh, there's 20,000 20, people staring at me. Oh, I got a guy that's six foot five holding on to me. Oh, now I know where I'm at. Did you ever get in a scrap and say, you know what, this isn't for me anymore? I'm done. Hell no. Hell no. Even when I got pounded, which I didn't get beat up that. Bad, what was bad. the worst beating you ever took the worst? In, in the show? Um, in the show, McGratton caught me one time uh, where it looked bad, but it wasn't that bad. But my fights were okay. Was Colton it Dar- Orr fought, Darcy Tucker? Uh, I'll tell you right now. No, <laughs> no, fuck no. Colton Orr. I, oh, oh, I remember. Oh, here's what it After was. After you ran their goaltender, right? No, 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 no. No, he caught me to the left on that one. Didn't hurt. One time in St. Louis, I fought Colton Orr, and it didn't look bad. Didn't find it, whatever. But I threw a punch at the end of the fight, and I fell down, and he caught me with my helmet off in the back of my head, and my head hit the ice. And that night, I had about 15, 30, whatever, people there, and they all jammed in the back of my my Yukon, big-ass Yukon. I had girls in there, guys, and I'm driving home, dead sober. I'm driving home halfway to my 25-minute drive out to Eureka. I start spinning. Dead sober. Didn't even go to the bars afterwards. We're just all going to go to my house. We got, we got everything we need at my house, waiting to party. And I had the girls with us, and I started spinning on Highway 44. I was spinning so bad to where I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. And I puked all over everybody. And I had to pull over. Girls are going crazy. They didn't figure out what was going on. They thought I was sick, but I wasn't sick. I was fucking concussed. My buddy jumped in the car. We went back to my house. I cleaned up my car. Actually, my buddy did. We went in. I partied the rest of the night, woke up the next day, went out and played the next night and fought again. You did. And I was okay. So you obviously had a concussion. Ab- so and you don't even tell the trainers? Ow, fuck no. No, 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 no. Not that night. Hmm. No, no, no. Because the next day, I didn't even remember where I got the concussion So from. during the off season, when you're getting ready to play, are you training mentally and physically to play or to fight? To like, both. Where's the balance? So I did four. So I would wake up. Usually I'd get up and skate first. You get up and skate, depending on what day, what, what month it is. So if it's August, I'm skating first. Skating is the most important thing. If it's June, I'm working out. Strength is the most important thing. So when you're in August, I'm skating. Then I go do a light workout, mostly the cardio stuff or pushing things or just like quick, uh, fast twitch things. And then I go box. I would box all summer long. But it depends on if you skated first or you worked out first. And in the beginning of the summer, you work out first, get your strength down. Then you go skate, and then you would box here and there. And you do your 20. All you need to do is 25 minutes of boxing, man. And you're fucking donezo. And you get your shit like going. Like Ilya Kovalchuk. What is he doing He right got now? it from me. Did he? Yes. Dude, he looks like a beast. Oh, he sexy does, ass beast. Doesn't is what he, he is. That dude's a stud. Like, he's in great shape. Awesome. Man. God, he's so awesome, man. And he's throwing heat. He knocked cats out. He knocked out Luke Shen. Boom. See you later. See ya. Sit down, Lukey, Shen. Good guy. In Love a, you, Braden, in too. In a fight? In a fight. Knocked a f- him out. Knocked him the fuck out. Look it up. Wow. Knocked him the fuck out. We may have to out. break down that video. All right, we will. We'll get Luke Shen on with Lukey us. Lukey and Kobe. <laughs> like, let's look we at this. We can get them both. I know. 
Fuck, you're scoring 40 a year and you're knocking cats out. You're pretty good at hockey. That was offered to us, actually, a few months ago. Do you want to get Braden and Luke on at the same time? Let's do it. And so we may have to I do love that. both of those guys. We'll revisit that. I love both of those But, you know, like, no one, like, Braden Shen's one of my favorite players to come through oh, here. Oh, fuck, I know I awesome. say that, but, like, anybody who is... He is, though. He's, he's cool as shit. Dude, he really is, man. And, and another thing, like, even when you do, like, a, a hit on chicklets and shit, like... I go in the locker room. He's like, "Dude, you pump me up so much." Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just like that man. Little things no, like he's that. Cool. I'm like, fuck yeah, he's you're cool. awesome, man. He's cool. But so I, I don't, I didn't want to waste an interview with him during quarantine. I know. Let's get him when he's. I want to have him up. sitting Let's get down right up, here, baby. hanging out. Let's go. Let's he's go. a great talker too. Fucking awesome cat. Hits like a fucking truck. Yep. Remember in the playoffs. Great family too. Man. Remember in the playoffs yep. when he would fucking back check hit motherfuckers. Oh god, I love it, man. Yep. Love you, Braden Shin, dude. And Lukey, you're a good dude too. Isn't it amazing though? You look at the Blues roster. They win the Stanley Cup. How much has changed? Like all these people that have come here. Like people don't mention Braden Shen as much as like O'Reilly and Baruby and Bennington. Yeah. Braden he's Shen kind of like started it. Fuck okay? yeah. Badass. Like, of all the guys that came here from the outside that led to this team Fucking actually awesome. winning. Love him, man. Hard beast, man. Nonstop. Just a, just a hockey player. And if he Old school, too. And if he doesn't score, Andy, he's still contributing. Yep. That's what I like about him. Yep. You don't have to fucking score every night. You're banging. You're doing this. You're setting guy. You're winning battles in the corner. I like you, brain shit. Yeah, but he's got old school mentality, Fucking too. A. You know? Bad boy. Bad boy. Cool ass family. Really cool family. Very cool Parents family. Parents are great, too. Blue collar. His dad is a firefighter, man. Yeah. Blue collar. Fuck yeah, dude. Love it. All right. Who do we have on this episode? <sighs> you don't even uh, know. Chris Stewart. Yeah. Chris Stewart, dude. Yes. Yeah, baby. Chris Stewart, man. Listen. Great guy. Another bad boy. I wanted to get this guy on for a couple of reasons. First off, you know, he's on that, um, you know, Alliance... Uh, you know, the NHL uh, Alliance, Black, yeah, the uh, NHL, African American, yeah, the, Black the Alliance. NHL, I just forgot the name all of a sudden. Is it sudden. Black Alliance? The, no, it's the it's the Alliance uh, of African Americans. No, it's a diversity alliance. There it is. Diversity might be, Alliance. Might be, might be. And you see all these names that are on the Diversity Alliance and all these guys are talking everywhere and whatever. And I think it's great that they're, you know, spreading the message of what they're doing and whatever. But, you know, everyone wants to talk to, you know, uh, Akeem, Akeem. Aliou. Is it uh, Aliou uh, or Alou? I said Alou. I've never seen him play. People are like calling him Aliou. Call him So Muhammad I thought maybe Ali. we were saying it wrong. Is it Aliou? I don't know. Okay. Um, but Evander Kane's getting a lot of play. I'm like, I want to talk to my boy Chris Stewart, man. And you know what Stewie's like? he just kept it he's real, just cool, dude. dude. He wasn't like, feel sorry for me. Feel no, no, he didn't. No, he's just no. like, no, there's things that need to change. But I went through it, yep. and I fucking sucked it up, mm-hmm. and now we're here. And you know what? It's not going to happen anymore. The shit that I dealt with is not going to happen anymore because right. we're here. But he didn't feel sorry for himself. He wasn't like, poor me. He wasn't like, I should have made more money because mm-hmm. I'm black. No. Nothing. Nothing like no, that. No, but I think I, his, I think his message is he wants to grow the game of hockey. Yes, man. of course. Of and course. he wants to make the game more accessible, more inviting for minorities to get involved in the game at the grassroots level. But he also said, I went through a tough time and I figured it out. Mm-hmm. And now I'm here and I got 20 in a fucking But you know what bank. he says right off the bat? Yeah. He goes, this is my game, boys. Yeah, dude. These are my boys. Yeah. Like, he, he's not about... Dividing. No, he's like, I love himself. everybody. No, he's just a, um, this is probably, and I'm going to say this right now. Of all the interviews you're going to hear in regard to a lot of the, um, you know, racial equality or racial inequality, however you want to look at it, and then how it correlates to the game of hockey and the National Hockey League. You've said this it is right. the realest interview you will hear. There you go. Of anywhere. There you go. Because we know him, he knows us. This is not, we weren't like, you know, tippy toeing around with our Hi, questions. Are you okay? Like some of these other interviews yeah, that I'm on, hearing. Get on. It was like, dude, what's up? Tell us. Like, you what know, the fuck? Break Let's it down go. for Tell us. Tell me. What's Let, up? Look, what look, are you man, doing? Can we learn something? Teach me something yep. so I could uh, adapt to it. That's right. And he's like, no, this is how it fucking went. And and he's just a real dude, man. He had a, uh, uh, a a real serious background. He's such a success story for him to to be able to make it to the National Hockey League. For him and his brother to both be first round yeah, picks. Big lefty too, baby. These are unbelievable people. And uh, Wayne Simmons is a great dude, too. Love man. him. Tough son. Yeah. I fucking have him as a captain on my team yeah. any fucking yeah. day. So, again, man, I just uh, really respect and appreciate what they're doing. Yeah, and I think people will, too, after after checking out this interview with Chris Stewart. This is the realest interview you will hear. There you go. I'm telling you. Of all the interviews you've heard, different players talking on this subject, on this topic, come to me and tell me after the conversation 
this wasn't the yeah, realest yeah. interview you've heard on this topic. And if it's not, you, you explain to me chirp, why. Then chirp I'll, Andy. Then I'll tell you, hey, yeah, okay, fucking I chirp guess him. you're right. Fucking chirp Well, him. you're I'll... nodding your head, yes. Oh, I know, but chirp Andy, though, if you disagree, because then I'll like help you with that on Twitter. <laughs> That's what I do. All right, so your car broke down the other day. Oh, my God. Fucking embarrassing. Okay, so we did, uh, for the 50th, well, I guess we could say it, we did Lou Lamarillo. Yes. Are we allowed to say this? Well, we haven't released it yet, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So I'm already He's st- coming up next. I'm already stressed out. Not this one, but the let, next Let me podcast. tell a goddamn yeah. story. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm already stressed out. He already he thought I was making fun of him. In the interview So I'm already freaked out We did the interview I get home Kate's like Okay let's go for Have a couple cocktails At the Mexican joint Right by our house I go there And we have And then we're going home And I hope I turn the fucking key And it doesn't work So what do I do I'm like "Ah, I'm like Everybody's like Walking by Hi Cam Hi Aren't you leaving Cam Why aren't you leaving I'm like My truck doesn't work And they're like You're a fucking Hoosier I'm like God damn it So I call Car Shield No What happened No actually (laughs) I call no, what? What did I do? What did I say? You said call car. I go, dude. Thank you, Andy. I'm like, dude, what are Jesus you doing? Christ. You're like, oh, I'm just dropping it you off. You have to say re- this part. I'm, I'm, dro- I'm building the story I'm up. I'm dropping it off at Eureka Towing. And they're I'm great. Like, what, dude? I'm like, call car shield. Call car shield. I forgot. Now. I forgot. And they hooked I it for- up. They, oh, my God. Answer right away. I go, hey, look, I need, look, my starters, I got people walking by. I'm signing autographs. I'm handing out hockey sticks in the back of my fucking truck. I got to get this truck out of here or else they're going to take it because it's so expensive with all my hockey memorabilia in there. <laughs> you know how that goes, Car Shield. They're like, Cam, send it up there. We'll take care of it. That's all I got to do. Yep. And I'm like, that's it? They're like, yeah, send it up there and we will take care of it. Go back home and clean your fucking house up because I know your wife's pissed at you. I'm like, okay, fine. That's how easy it was, Andy, yeah. honestly. But you and know what? They was, didn't They didn't treat you any different than they would anybody else, No, though. no. That, that's what so they didn't. I want people to know that. It's exactly. not like he didn't get this you know, preferential treatment because he he. My buddy played did three the and a half thing. minutes a night. Fuck you. Okay? My buddy did the same thing the other day, and he has car shield the same thing, and yep. I forgot, and you reminded yep. me of yeah. it. Yeah, that's what happens. I'm embarrassed. Dude, I'm customer embarrassing. Customer service. Second to none. Unbelievable. So if your starter goes out, if you're a Hoosier in the like parking me. lot like at the me. Mexican restaurant, yep. like you can't me. get home. Yep. yep, like me. Car yep. Shield takes care of it. Again, 800 857 2481. Mention the promo code CAM. You'll save 10%. Again, Car Shield came to the rescue. For so Cam they fix Jansen. it. I walk CarShield.com. All the they do, I walk into the, the, the Eureka place mm-hmm. and they go, here Eureka go, Towing. Eureka Towing. <laughs> Is that what it's called? I don't know. They go, here you go, Cam. They gave me my keys. I go, do I need anything, do anything else? I go, nope. Car Shield took care of it. I didn't even need to sign anything. They took care of everything. I, I get know. my card. They cleaned it. It's like ridiculous. And you know what? Because they'll let you pick your own place and all that type of I stuff. I know. You That's know? the thing. And they would have paid for your rental car, too. Son of a bitch. And said you're driving around your mom's oh, car. Oh, fucking embarrassing. Girls saw me driving that thing. Oh, God. I st- oh, God. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> Kate was happy about that, actually. I, wa- I need to look nerdy once in a while. And that was good. I need to be self-deprecating once in a while, and it happened. All right, I dropped my phone the other day. You look like a Hoosier. Which means I'll be calling my boys over at GadgetBuyback.com. GadgetLabMobile.com. They've got two websites. Two websites. 877-772-8880. If you're a company out there, you got a bunch of old tablets, iPhones. Doesn't have to be iPhones. No, Samsung. be anything. Um, if you're any a company. Phone, yeah, just... Listen, turn it in, and uh, they'll buy it from you, and then you can replace all your old phones with some new phones for your employees. But, again, if you're here in St. Louis, they've got a store in Eureka. Again, 877-772-8880. Oakville. Oh, Oakville. Sorry. Oak. Well, They're going to come to Eureka. Eureka. No, yeah. it's Oakville. Oakville. It's Patty Maroon. Yes. The second best superstar say? in Eureka. Drop your uh, phone off and then go next door to that place. To, to uh, uh, Bar- Barney Stone. Yeah. <laughs> Blarney Stone. Blarney Stone. That's a Blarney <laughs> Stone in Oakville. A Patty Oakville, Cam Eureka. Yeah. Figure it out, Andy. Gadgetbuyback.com. I had some people ask me the other day, hey, what is that place? guy? I need them, and uh, and I sent them out. Again, 877-772-8880. They've got a lot of stores coming up here in the St. Louis area. This place is legit. Great people. David Long, looking forward to getting oh, on David the ice Long with you. is the man, and he's a better hockey player than you, and he's probably going to take we your gotta spot. Find and he's, no, we got to find that out. I'm going to find it out. Dude, I, I'm, feel, I evaluate every fucking day. Skated, He's a better hockey player. I skated player the other day, by the way. Did first you? time. Good, you Dude, should. We got fucking we skate. got written up for not social distancing yeah, on well, the ice. Pussy. Yeah. What is that all about? I don't know. That's soft. David Long would have been like, "Go fuck yourself." Oh, I did. I was like, <sighs> "Well, David, well, I'm just, I'm, can I pump David Long up, please? Yes. He's a better hockey player than you." And I will say this. <laughs> That's to be. Re- 
determined. I, can I say one thing about uh, about Gadget Lab? Hmm. If you are a young kid and you have a broken phone and you're trying to like talk to girls, they're gonna look at you like you're a goddamn idiot. Don't have a broken phone and try to hand your phone to the girl to put your number in there. She can make what? Your phone's cracked. You're a loser. Go to Gadget Lab. The chicks already know where to go. They yes. already know it's in Oakville. Don't be a loser, Andy. 877-772-8880. All right. How about Bellman.com? Oh, my God. These dudes are unbelievable. Oh my God. We I all mean, know uh, about the new cars. Mm. I want to focus real quick on those used cars. Their used inventory is yeah. unbelievable. You don't always have to buy new. No. No, you don't. Save some money, get a used car. There you go. I want new. Yeah. But you don't have to have new. <laughs> you need. <laughs> I'm a princess, though. I'm a princess. It is what, not everybody's a princess. I am. It is what it is. All right. Bellman has over 125. 125 Damn, quality pre-owned vehicles in stock across both stores. So they've got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on one side. And on the other side, you just cross the street. Cadillac Buick GMC oh. in Troy, mm. Missouri. Mm-hmm. All makes and models, cars, trucks, SUVs, including 12 vehicles right now priced at $11,000. Get on under, with yourself. Under Get on with yourself. Are you kidding me? Get on with yourself. I don't well, believe that. Even when you're buying a pre-owned vehicle, you'll still enjoy the new car experience, man. They don't it change the, the experience same. in terms of how you buy the car, new or used. Doesn't matter. Bellman wants to keep you as a customer for life, and they'll treat you like family. Mm. You're looking for a new car? Think used. Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Go see our boy Dan Bellman, and he'll take care of you. One more thing. Yeah. Guys, honestly, and I don't like to preach this too much. It just kind of, sounds kind of nerdy, but in order for this machine to work, you got to take care of the sponsors, man. Right. These guys are all legit like, we know them personally. They're all big, huge hockey fans. They support St. Louis in a million different ways. Take care of them. Yes. Take care of them. Car Shield, Bellman, Gadget Lab, all of them. They're all St. Louis. They're all fucking, they take care of the, the people in St. Louis. They donate money left and right. They're all good people, and they will take care of you. Yeah. So just remember that. So there help us out as well. Right. And check out the brand new Camistry Podcast video clips. Yeah, baby. They were putting out on the days that we don't put out our podcast interviews. Yeah, we appreciate all the support. Chris Stewart, one of our all-time Love favorites. Love you all. Stewie on the Cam and Strick podcast. We have like no structure. We're like Cam on the ice. Yeah. No structure. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> so what'd you guys talk about today, man? And what we're gonna get into all kinds of shit with you, but how, how like what, what was that zoom? Can you even talk about what was going on with it? Like is it do you guys know exactly what you're doing yet? Like, how was it? Yeah, I mean, uh I mean, right now we're in a process of uh, you know, it, it, First of all, the support has been uh, has been great. We've been getting lots of feedback, and you know a lot of people who are interested in the cause and, and want to help out. So, you know, right now we're just having more conversations of, and uh, interviews, and kind of just trying to see uh, who's going to align, align with us, and uh, you know, have the same goals of uh, you know pushing this pushing this thing forward. That's uh, kind of where we're at right now. Yeah, I love it, Stewie. But how long has this been in the works? I mean, was the George Floyd thing the the thing that kind of pushed it over the top, or was this going to happen anyway? Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a backstory, you know. I've known, uh, you know, I've known Akeem Alou personally for uh, for the last uh, what, the last 16 years. So, uh, you know, I've kind of known throughout his career everything that he's that he's been dealing with. And uh, you know, when he when he came out with it on public, he, uh, you know, I was there to, to to lend unwavering support, and that's kind of what started the conversations. And then, uh, you know, now with everything that's going on in 2020, it's you know you. You, you, you can't hide from this stuff anymore. You know, it's 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 nope. thrown in your face, thrown in your face every day. You turn on CNN, you turn on the news, you turn on your phone. It's uh, you know, racism racism is uh is a topic of conversation right now. And you know, we decide to come together as a collective and uh, you know, use our platform to promote some change. Yeah, no doubt. All right, tell us about Akeem Alou. Like, I mean, I know his story as a junior hockey player. I mean, obviously, I haven't followed him a ton because he hasn't played in the show and hasn't. You know, it's not like a guy you run into or watch play, but what's he like as a person? I mean, you say you've known him for a long time. Tell us about him. No, for sure. You know, and I can tell you about my first encounter with him is why I probably have the utmost respect for him. It's uh, the first time I ever met him in my life. I was uh, I was 19 years old, and it was at my mother's funeral. So mm, to say really? uh, to say he has, uh, says that about his character is lets you know the kind of uh, person he is deep down, right off the bat. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's how we met. 
So who who gets decided to be in this alliance? And and there's some of the guys that kind of aren't involved, and and you know a couple of big names that guys that I play with Reaver and you know PK oh, Subban sure. and stuff like that. Were for they sure. wanting to get involved? Or why are they out? Oh, for sure. And that's and that's the thing to say not involved. That's the, that that'd be the wrong pretense. You know? Okay. There's, uh, well, what we wanted to make sure is this is this this is for everyone. There's this is this isn't a club that you can't be a part of. Anyone who who wants to be a part of this is in in some shape or form is is going to have the opportunity, but. The original seven kind of kind of all knew each other, and we kind of had the same backstory, and that's who we felt comfortable going with to start to start the initiative. You know, this is this is this is going to be years of projects. This is you know we're only in day five or six right now. Yeah, I get it. So I mean, what is it you guys want to accomplish? I mean, when you guys get your you know collective thoughts together, you sit down, you talk, and and uh, you say, hey man, we got to get this done. What do you hope is the end result of this, Stewie? What do you want to have you know accomplished yeah. here? I mean. The common denominator that we have is, uh, you know, we've 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 all endured racism in hockey at some point in our lives. You know, some some for me specifically, mine were more at the uh, the younger stages. You know, and that's the one thing I wanted to make clear. This uh, we weren't coming together to to bash hockey. You know, I I love the game of hockey. My boys love the game of hockey. We just want the game of hockey to be to be a safe place. You know, for for the fans and and for the people. So, you know, what we're gonna what we're trying to do is is bring the awareness and. Uh, you know, we, 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 we want to be involved in the decision-making of, of coming up with policies and uh, to make sure the game's a better place for everyone. So I want to get into your story, too. Uh, but, I, but but maybe, like, to, like, kind of give an example. Like, maybe if you're a, you're a young black kid, you're in, you're in minor hockey, and you're taking a, some abuse from maybe fans and other players on the team or whatever the case is, but now you look and you got fucking five, six studs all African American. They're all in this alliance, and you could kind of look through that as a conduit and be like, you know what? I have, I, I could speak, and they're going to hear me. Is that kind of what, what you're looking at here with some of these young kids? You know, you know what? You you nailed it right on the head, and that's and that's our mission. You know, we we want to get into these communities. We want to reach out to these kids. We 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 want to be their outlet. You know, we we want them to know they're not alone. They, you know, we they they have people to uh, to reach out to. You know, we want to create a hotline. We want to be accessible. But you know, it's. Uh, you know, there's kids like us. You know, when we we endured racism, you know, some some kids will quit. You know, some kids will just quit the game, and that's mm-hmm. and that's not fair. You know, not everybody's strong, and everybody handles it the same way. So, you know, we want them to know that we are there for them. You know, I look at it like this. I mean, if you're a parent right now and you hear some of these horror stories about how some of you guys were treated at a young age, you sit back and you say, "Why would I ever subject my kid to the game of hockey and put them in this environment?" So it sounds like you know this is what you want to get a hold of and 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 just you know kind of make sure some of the you know, situations and the circumstances you guys endured, Stewie, that, you know, it just becomes a safe environment for other kids moving forward that, hey, they don't have to endure the same stuff that you guys did. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's that's our mission. You know, I think, uh, you know, we, we, you know, history doesn't repeat itself and, and unless we unless we learn from it. And I think, you know, with everything in 2020 that's going on right now, I think, you know, the, the world's had enough. I think everybody's watching. And I think everyone, you know, to a, to a man is is – is ready to step up and you know admit that you know it's 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 not right you know just because uh, it's not happening to you directly doesn't doesn't mean you're going to turn the blind eye anymore. Stewie, how bad was it for you growing up personally? You know what? You know, Andy, for me personally, you know, I just, you know, one 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 instance is too much. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not going to put a number on it, but mm-hmm. from the things from my brothers, you know, to my best friend Wayne Simmons, and you know, he's this this is 2011, 2012. He's he's playing an NHL game. He gets a banana thrown on him when he's when he when he's going down for a for a, for a shootout. Crazy, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's it's yeah, that, this this is not too long ago, you know. And then we're playing in uh, we're playing in uh, in Czech Republic in the, in the lockout, and the whole crowd's shouting ch- ch- chant a monkey at him. You know what I mean? So it's oh, like, Jesus. It's, it's 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 you know it's it's disgusting. So it's like, and that's the thing. I don't I don't want to bash my game boys. You know I'm. You know what I'm bringing to this group is I'm I'm coming to her from uh from through eyes of a uh, of a concerned father now. I got I got three kids. My boys love hockey. My boys love being on the ice. They love watching their dad on the ice. So you know I have a platform now and I'm going to use my voice to to raise awareness. So you know hopefully my kids don't have to go through that because you know that 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 would rip me apart. Well, were the so you growing up and were the guys on a team like that? I mean the coaches or were it just sometimes the fans? 
I mean, you got to think like I look at you. Cam says fans like you're playing in like eighteen thousand seat no, arenas. No, 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 okay, no, no, no. Okay, shut the fuck up. You already. Hey, GTA Child Boys. You know, you know how they do it up there. They're still fucking parents, and the parents suck. So they're saying, but if did any player like if any did you ever see that in a locker room? Like anybody? I know there's Joey's jokes, Dewey. Like you know, some of the other guys are gonna throw jokes around and stuff like that. But was it was it like anybody in the locker room said anything like I can't like they didn't like you. And no. if they did, would you're like, fuck you. I'm, I, I throw left heat. What the fuck are you no, talking exactly. about? And you, and, you, and you know me, Jance. I, I can defend myself. You know, I, I'm, I am a, I'm a true believer. Once you, once you get to know the real person, you know, I, I don't I don't really see color. So I think I think my teammates and everyone has always judged me off my character. And I think that's what you should be judged off. But it hasn't it hasn't been the same for, for everyone else. And, you know, uh, I think, you know, I think it's just time to have these conversations. This is. This is this stuff's uncomfortable, and you know how it is, Jance. You know we're when we're when we're playing hockey and our game days, and we're we're so stuck in that routine and that bubble oh. that nothing 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 sidetracks us. You know to the point mm-hmm. where my wife and kids they got to leave that they got to leave the house when I got to have a nap on a game day. You know what I mean? So it's like <laughs> we're so we're so protected in that bubble that you know we don't really get hit with these these real life problems. And but now it's 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 staring us down in the face, and I, I think it's time. It's uncomfortable. You know, no one's really comfortable having these conversations, but. No, they're essential to have now. That's, and I'm a true believer in that. Hey, I'm curious what you think of the the environment in the NHL today. And listen, I mean, there is progress. A lot of players have made their statements, but did you? A lot of the statements sounded the same a little bit, Stewie. Yeah, we're gonna like, get into that. Like, I'm we're not gonna, 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 gonna knock the statements, but we're did, getting into that. Did later. you feel like the statements from a lot of these guys were coming from the heart? Were they doing it because everybody else was doing it? Uh, I, I mean, mean, were they genuine? What, what was your take on it? And that's the society. That's the society we live in today. No matter no matter what you do in life. You know, people are always gonna question your intention. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at you look at the Amazon guy who, who he donated, uh, you know, a hundred a hundred million dollars. Well, they're Bezos. like, well, that's only that's only like a hundred dollars to him. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's <laughs> never it's 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 never gonna be enough. So I think I think a lot of these players they 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 made they made a safe statement, and they at least you know their intent was was their heart was in the right place. They they tried. They, you know, they're they're trying, but. You know, it's now it's now it's time to find up with the it's time to follow up with the action. Yeah, well, Bezos I think is making like five hundred schmill a day, so it's like <laughs> motherfucker, throw it down, you cheap fuck. Although you get a divorce, and he, but you ever look at some of these like uh, like actors and stuff, and they come out and they're just like, well, we feel so bad. I mean, do you ever sit back and some of these people are like, wait, 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 yeah, I went through some hard times. I had to fucking dig through this. I'm fucking, I got twenty in a fucking bank. I fucking played fifteen years in the fucking show. Don't pander to me. Don't panic. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? Do you ever get pissed? To, like, you're like, okay, tone it down. We need to move in the right direction, but stop apologizing. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's uh, that's 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 part of the reason why why we did come out together was you know we didn't want to be a group that just came and talked and you know and asked for money or or, or tried to raise the money. You know, we're gonna go out there. We're we're gonna do the work ourselves. We're gonna get in the community ourselves. We're we're independent. We're gonna have a voice, and uh, you know, we're gonna back it up. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that in terms of being independent. I talked to somebody today, you know, who was invited by Gary Bettman and, and Kim Davis and those with the, you know, the NHL, and they're putting together their own coalition. You guys elected to do it separately, not connect yourself right away, right off the bat with the National Hockey League. What was the thought process behind that? I mean, I just think for us, we 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 wanted to have a voice. You know, we uh, we we really want to be involved in the policy making and and really really make sure we had that voice to stay independent. You know. Our, our main objective is, is to work with the NHL, to work with Hockey Canada, to work with USA Hockey, to, to really bring about this change. But, you know, we're, we're adamant that, we, you know, we, we didn't want to be three or, you know, seven guys who are sitting on a panel who are yes men who, who have people above them. We, 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 we really want to be involved in this, in this you know, hands on. So you, you, were you a good player as a kid? Because didn't – I know Anthony. I remember playing against Anthony with Kingston, captain – Fucking tough, scored goals. I remember, I'm like, oh my god! But like, you had to have him kind of get you on that team. Were you not a good player growing up? Did, how no, how was, the fuck did you, you go know, from was, A to B so fast? Yeah, I was. You know, I was, I was, I was really good growing up. Not, you know, not not seventh seventh overall to the OHL and child prodigy. You know, meeting Bobby Orr when you're 14. I wasn't, I wasn't that good. <laughs> like, my, like, like, like my brother. Yeah, he I was, wasn't. I wasn't yeah. that gifted yet. I was. I was a little bit of a late developer. But you know, when the thing that did slow me down was you know my uh, my OHL draft year. We we were going through some financial problems, and uh, you know I was a little bigger at the time, and I decided to step away for hockey for for the for the premises of my family. You know, if you don't know much about me, I I got five younger sisters, so you got to imagine oh. at this point at this point I'm 13 years old, and you know my sisters are 
11, 10, 11, 10, 9, and the Twins, and the Twins were 8. So it's like, you know, I didn't I didn't think it was fair of me at that point to, to really commit this money that, you know, A, we didn't have, and two, you know, we didn't have the time for my parents to really, to really, to do those things for me. So I stepped away from the game at that age, and then uh, I played my midget year, and then uh, the next year, my brother... It was uh, he just got drafted to uh, to the Florida Panthers, twenty fifth overall, two thousand and three, arguably the best draft of all time. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. Um, yeah, you know, he put his neck on the line and got me a tryout down in Kingston, and I went down there and made the team as a walk on. The Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on, and you know, right off the bat, you're gonna have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now back to the Cam. interview. I love it, man. Dominated it. that and, you and, dominated that and, town. And, Don't and, act like you didn't. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and Stewie, listen, I know your story, man, and, and I've written about it in the past, and we've talked about it. You know, when you first came to St. Louis after the trade, and um, I love your dad too, man. I mean, if I if I had your dad's accent, I would just sit at home and talk to myself all day long. <laughs> what kind of accent was it? Oh, Katie? He's Jamaican dude. Oh, yeah. Jamaican yes. boy. Oh, he's yeah. like an OG, man. I yeah. love it. I love it. <laughs> Fuck so, yeah. so your dad. I mean, just just your your upbringing, having like people who you played with buy you skates, help you, you know, pay to play and stuff like that. Like, where would you be without some of those people, Stewie? Yeah, exactly. And this is, uh, I feel like this is a big thing leading back to the HGA is, is I think this is my mission to give back. You know, we, uh, we had families go out of their way to drive us to games, stay with them on weekends, go, go for tournaments. You know, we, you know, some games it's $4 again. We didn't even have the $4 to get in. Like, I mean, we really came from, from the bottom. I remember when I broke my, when I broke my, my stick, my dad taped it back together with duct tape. He said, no slap shots. That's how I ended up getting the hands, boys. Oh, <laughs> I should have done that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, you know, I'm curious, like, you know, how much education and, and when when it should start with some of these, you know, minority kids who are playing. Because, Stewie, listen, I, I've interviewed NHL players, minority players who didn't know who Willie O'Ree was, right? And, and, th- and this is a yes. guy who who is a trailblazer and, you know, mm-hmm. truly broke ground for a lot of people. Um, mm-hmm. I interviewed minority players, you know, for stories for Black History Month, and they weren't comfortable doing it. They didn't want to do it. They didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to be known as a black player. Mm-hmm. How do we move forward now to be like, you know what, damn right, I am a black player, and I want to I talk about it, it, you know? I mean, how much is th- are things changing? And, and did you feel that from some of your, you know, counterparts when you were first coming into the league? I mean, I, and the answer is it's, it's a little bit complex, but, you know, I I take it like a guy, you know, like an example of, you know, Vladi, Vladi Tarasenko. You know, when he uh, when he comes over from Russia, his first first couple weeks, he's a little shy, he's not saying much, and, you know, we got to take him to dinner, we got to order dinner for him, you know, he doesn't he doesn't know what's on the menu, you know, you got to bring him along, you got to bring him along to, and, you know, you really you really got to get to know him, you really got to get to, to know these guys of these different cultures and where they come from, and, you know, there. You know, there's one thing you know about Volva is his real sense of family upbringing. You know what I mean? I think that's how we we yeah. remain good friends to this day because you know we had a common respect and love for family that you know we we really bonded on. So you know, my advice is you know if you do have a you know a black teammate or you know a, a teammate from a different religion or anything like that or you know you get get to know them, have these conversations, ask him ask him about his upbringing, ask him where it's ask him where it's from, ask him what his favorite food is. You know, I'm Jamaican. My my favorite food is is curry goat or oxtail. These are these are famous authentic Jamaican dishes you know yep. you got you got you got to get outside your comfort zone you got you got you got to get to know people everyone's from different walks of life everyone has a different story but the thing that brings you together is, is is this beautiful game of hockey which 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 I love hey man i know all about the curry goat we 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 go to the grill every summer man i know yeah, about right. it. Andy, I, Andy, Andy, you know Andy's fucking fucking oh, yeah. hey, i listen and, i got the anything reg- you like Andy's going to like now i got now. the reggae that's, going that, in my that, car that might, you don't got to worry about that sp- that might be a little too spicy for Jan so i don't know <laughs> i'll be pissing out of my ass for a week <laughs> but i love love it man the fact that you truly are authentic man so but it's just about teaching the kids i mean we have come a long way though right i mean things have have you know there's been progress but now it's about taking the progress we have and truly taking it to the next level and and uh, and just growing the game i mean how much has it grown though stewie today versus you know when you first came in i mean do you feel like we've started to see some of the progress 
or, or do you, you feel like we just got a long way to go to really get to where we well, need I to mean, be? I mean, for sure. But it's like there's been tons of products, but you can, you can say just like, you know, in the USA, you know, there, there's been progress too, but, you know, is you know, how much is enough progress? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, boys, you got to understand, like, I'm not I'm not trying to be a big politician or, you know, they are, uh, you know, a big martyr or, you know, anything yeah. like that. I'm, I'm just, I'm just yeah. being, I've always been called comfortable, comfortable. You're comfortable real, man. You're real. real. Dude, we get it. Exactly. And we this is, it. you know, it's, and it, you know, it's, it's, it, it's been better. It's been, it's been good, but you know, it, it hasn't been good enough. And we, you know, we, and this is up to all of us to, 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 like I said, to look each other in the face and everyone just agree. And, you know, we push forward together. What'd you buy when you first started making money, though, Stewie? You made some money. First, You're staying in Colorado. First, he, bought a, he bought his sisters what a new the Louis. Fuck? <laughs> What'd you fucking well, buy? Yeah. What'd you do? Well, I bought my family a house. That, oh. that, was, that yeah. was probably that was probably the first big purchase. But for me, uh, I had a uh, I had a I bought a Cadillac Escalade white with 24 uh, inch black rims. That was oh. probably my big first purchase. Wow, you still have you still have that or what? No, no, I got the minivan with the three baby seats. Oh, boys. There you go. <laughs> Do you really drive the minivan? Are you are you, you driving on, the minivan like, or what? No, no, no. Come on, boys. Yeah, I was gonna say on. it's on 24s if you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you got so so you started making some. Like, so, I mean, how nice was that though? And I and I know your uh, your brother was starting to make a little bit of money too. And I mean, isn't that a good feeling though? You you start helping out your sisters a little bit. You're feeling comfortable. Like, God damn, that must have been a great feeling, right? No, for sure. You know, and I'm very I'm very grateful for everything as hockey given me has given me. You know, it's it's put me in a position to take care of my family, be beyond my wildest dreams, and you know, it's, 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 it's very satisfying. And that's, you know, and that's, that's my main message. You know, hockey, hockey has been great to me. And now I just, I want to pay it back. You know, you look at your career as a whole, Stewie, and I, listen, I know you're playing this season. I would imagine you're going back He's to still camp grinding it with, right now. with Philly and, and you got to get back on the icing and get yourself ready to play. But as a whole, how do you look at your, at your career? You, you, you think you fulfilled your expectation? You think you, you did get as high as you probably could have? Like where, where do you look at yourself in terms of your overall hockey career? Um, I mean, you gotta understand, guys. For 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 a guy who wasn't playing hockey when he was 15 years old, you mm-hmm. know, every 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 game in the NHL has has been a blessing. And I think I I haven't checked, but I think I'm up over I think around 670. So you know, it's uh, yeah. I don't think I don't think everything worked out to a T. But you know, you don't you don't you don't really get to you know. I, I think I look at it this way. I don't, it's you know what what your legacy is. You know my legacy isn't hockey. My legacy is is who I am as a father and, and what I do away from the rink. So I is, and I got the I got tons of respect of every guy I ever played with, and that's that's good enough for me. I know you were you were you, you know you had skill. You're a big power forward. And you fought a lot. Like, is it easier now, like, to still grind it out, knowing that you might have to deal with that fucking big big boy next door? Maybe a Boo Guard still cruising around. Maybe a Colt Norris still cruising around. Yeah, you're playing first, second line, but still, if you run somebody from behind, you got to deal with it. So is it like the game's a lot easier as far as stress is concerned, being a guy like you without the big boys around these days, eh? No, for sure. Oh, my you know, God. I, I remember my first uh, my first fight in uh, NHL exhibition was Kevin Westgarth. That's, that's, uh, those, <laughs> you know, those, those, those are the, the, the real big boys back then. So I think uh, – you know, you still got, you still got, you still got the Reevesy cats. You still got the uh, the McDermott. You got, you got some big boys. Reaver but, doesn't want to throw with you, Stewie. Well, Reaver doesn't uh, like to get hit anymore. I'll chirp him right hey, now. I don't care. Hey, he, had, he had his, he had his, he had his chance. You can ask him. He said no. Oh. oh. Hey, are you? Are you? Is, is one of the? It's one of the first things you guys are doing as part of this. You know, this this diversity group is is to bring him and Kaner together. Like, what's going on with he and Evander? Are they going to come together? Can or they what? be best friends again, please? I I keep, I keep saying we got to call Jake Paul and get this on a big big Vegas fight card. You know, I think, uh, <laughs> Shit. or you know, or we bring it to St. Louis. That fight would probably sell out there for sure. Oh, oh it probably yeah, would for sure. <laughs> hey, but I, I remember like you and Reaver like hanging out together. Reaver starts wearing the earrings and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Like, like, did you find it was easy enough to, or it was difficult, like, for you to be yourself and have personality when you consider you look around the dressing room and. And, you know, listen, hockey's a primarily, you know, white sport. And, I mean, did you feel like you were able to be yourself or did you have to kind of prove yourself as a player first? How did that work? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's tough. It's tough. It's a, you know, Jance, it's, 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 it's a slippery slope and it's, and it's a thin line. And, you know, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, hockey players are, are creatures of habits. But, you know, that's one of the things that we are fighting for. We want, we want inclusive, we want, we want inclusivity. You know, you don't, 
you don't want to be locked in and be judged because you have earrings on. Just because a guy's wearing earrings, what does what does that have to do with how good of a hockey player he is? You know what I mean? So that's those those are the little stereotypes and little things in the game that that we are trying to fix. It is tough though, Ice Dewey. Like it's a hostile locker room, and not just for oh. you or any, like if I walk in and I got a stupid fucking haircut, I'm getting goddamn bashed. <laughs> and if I walk oh. in there and I take over the music and I put a bunch of heavy metal on, or you put on deep, what, mm-hmm. hey, you're getting fucking beat no matter mm-hmm. what. But that's mm-hmm. but that's still part of it though. Like it's just it keeps you on your toes and things like that. And I think yeah. you know, I think it's just gotten in a better direction now as far as that's concerned. But it's mm-hmm. not an easy locker room to walk into, man. It's just not mm-hmm. No, for sure. For sure. There's there's so many different personalities and people from distant walks of life and you know, probably a couple a couple old grumpy guys are in the corner that probably hate your guts, but you know that's that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> they hate when I'm blasting Pantera. <laughs> hey man, oh, oh, they were hating when uh, when Jantz was 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 stick handling with the uh, oh, little oh golf ball. Oh my god! I, you you oh. can hear him from the gym. He still does it, Stewie. <laughs> Stewie, I got the fucking puck out of the zone. That's all that matters. <laughs> he still does it. I know. That's it's all a, that matters, baby. It's embarrassing. <laughs> hey, how well did you know? Uh, O'Reilly, Ryan O'Reilly, when you were in Colorado, like I mean, and and I mean, what was his reputation there? And I mean, we've gotten to know him here in St. Louis. He's like one of the best people we've ever met. Listen, that's from day one. As soon as he walked in, walked into that gym, and when he was 18 years old, we were line mates his first year. I don't know if you remember. I think I had 30 that year, but uh, no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just 30. <laughs> oh, but uh, but anyways, uh, long story short, but no, he's. Uh, He's just a great human being, you know. I, I remember I'd be uh, I'd be leaving the rink probably an hour, hour and a half after practice when in, when in Colorado, and he'd be the last guy on the ice until he flicked every puck into that bucket. You know, he uh, he has an engine like very few in the NHL. He's you know he's 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 a, he's a really great leader and even better person. So you know he's uh, you know I, I wish him I know congratulations on nothing but all the success that he's had, and you know hopefully he can raise another cup here. That's going to be starting up in July. Cam and Strick podcast here for our boy Dan Bellman with Bellman.com. Yeah, baby. You need some new wheels? Mm. Why not get a Cadillac or Buick a GMC? Yeah. Head out to Troy today. And again, don't forget about Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram yeah. right across the street. No doubt. Right there in Troy, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Visit them online. Check out their new selection, the pre-owned selection, the best service you will find anywhere in the country. Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get yourself some new wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. Now back to the interview. You know what? He's crazy on the off ice. On like always the first one. Like Andy and I are there all the time, and he's just. A, but then he'll, he'll go out and fucking party with it too. Like he's not a pussy. Like that dude's <laughs> Yo, a fuck. Not to, not, oh my not fucking to, god! Not to, not to, not to put I gotta hide my wife around him because she loves him. I'm like you're not fucking allowed to even look at him anymore. Yeah, not Terrible. to put his business. This is ten years ago, so we could say or whatever. We're all for beers the one night, and we're all having drinks and. You know, you come see, you know, coming to practice the next day, a little groggy eyed and, you know, there's, there's snook in the middle of uh, the gym doing yoga. He's on, he's doing a headstand. He's the last one at the bar, the first one in the gym. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, you know, that's, the, that's the kind of personality and the kind of character you're dealing with. And, you know, he loves the game and, you know, he's, he's a great leader. Yeah, with a man bun. I hit with the man. I don't with think, man bun. I don't think he slept for like a week straight. <laughs> oh my God. After they won the step. I'm like, you might want to have get a shirt some, on. You may want to get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You're turning pale white. I go. You got to put a shirt on. My wife is staring you down right now. Stop right? it. Hey, Stewie. Straight right? Guinness too. Straight Guinness. Straight I, Guinness. Oh yeah. Drink. Fucking oh. old school, baby. <laughs> hey, remember when you got traded to St. Louis though? And Pistol, Paul Stastny's dad. He just went crazy oh, on the geez. media oh, for God. trading Chris Stewart, <laughs> the future captain of the Avs. How could they trade this guy? Like, was coming to St. Louis good for you? Like, do you do you look back and you be like, man, my, my career may have been different if I would have stayed in Colorado? Like, how do you reflect on that? No. You know, I think, uh, you know, everything's happened for a reason. I had I had a great I had a great time in, in St. Louis. I still got a lot of friends who were, who were still close up to this day. Both Revo, both Shaddy were, were in my, were in my wedding, you know, were in my wedding party. And, uh, you know, when, when they did win that cup, I was, I was genuinely proud, proud for all those guys, you know, no, there's not a more deserving team and, and players. And, you know, and to be honest, a fan base that, that deserved that. So I was, I was genuinely happy to see that. Any, any coaches that you grew up with that were really cool, like fucking just understood it and understood the, the deal that you had to go through and Besides shit like that. Hitch. Besides Hitch, like, any, like <laughs> even you know, even in juniors, there's a coach that sticks out that you could fucking pump him. And said, no, this guy got it at even when he didn't need to get it at the time. You know what? I mean, my favorite coach was a junior was was uh, was Jim Holton. Uh, I think uh, he was at the time. I you know, he was he was he was a he was a mean prick. That's that's for sure. But 
he was definitely getting me ready for the pros. You know, yeah. that, was, that was that was for sure. You know, that was it was a big eye opener. So he was he was definitely priest of accountability, and he'd, he'd get in your face and he'd fire you up. But he did, he was he was honest and he was fair. So I you know I respected him a lot. Hey, you brought up Tarasenko, and it's funny because you brought up Shattenkirk too, and and you know Tarasenko and Shatty were real tight as well. Yeah. Like, I mean, just you know, taking a guy like that under your wing. I mean, how could a guy from Russia, you know? Someone like you from Scarborough, you look at, you know, the upbringing that Shaddy had, you know, growing up in Connecticut. I mean, everybody from all different you know, walks of life all of a sudden come together and be close friends. I mean, that's what hockey can do for you, can't it? No, for sure. For sure. And that's and that's what it's about. You know, that's you know, he's from Russia. I'm 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 from Scarborough, you know, two different different parts of the world. And to come back come come to the rink every day and share that mutual respect. And you know, just just to touch on another quick story about uh well, Vladdy, one time we went for uh, breakfast in Central West End there, Copperman's, right? I think oh, that's... Yeah. Uh, oh, that's yeah. Copperman's cool. Deli. So we go sit down. We're all having breakfast. We're getting French toast, eggs, you know, traditional breakfast. And, you know, Vladdy, Vladdy didn't know what he's doing, so he pointed to a thing on the menu, and here comes here comes his meal. It's this big, like, corned beef sandwich, and he had, we wanted nothing to do with it. He's oh. just staring at it like, what is this? <laughs> I want what you guys had. <laughs> this didn't even hey. know what the, he didn't even know what he fucking ordered. But you're right. <laughs> no, 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 no idea, but he, st- he still ate it, though, so he, you know, that was old school. <laughs> hey, you know what? And I've seen him around his kids, man, and just you, did, you can awesome. see the genuine love. In fact, when my wife was pregnant with our third kid, I remember him saying, "Hey, I, I hear your wife's pregnant." And he goes, "Every child is a blessing." <laughs> yeah. Let me write that and down with real quick, buddy. With, sure. with a straight face, though. With Stern a straight face. face. Look, look, look! You're right in your eyes, too. That's right. <laughs> That's right, man. I mean, he's such an unbelievable hockey player. But you know, you mentioned Scarborough and you know, right Wayne there. Wayne Simmons, and you know, I know that you know Kevin Weeks was it his dad that had a hockey camp or hockey school growing up. No, like, Kevin. No, Kevin. Kevin did actually. Kevin did. Okay, so yeah. for you guys growing up, like, who else is from there? Like, describe that environment in yeah. Scarborough, you know, versus Richmond Hill and all these other yeah. places where kids are coming from in the National Hockey exactly. League nowadays? I mean, for us personally, uh, you know, we didn't have a car. So we were we were taking public transportation to games. So that's, that's that was that, that was kind of, that puts you in a little bit of a, you know, the, yeah. the social economic picture. But uh, yeah, and that's, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not knocking the kid from Richmond Hill. He, he deserves every oh, opportunity, sure. but. You know, I, I I want the game more accessible for for the kids like me who who, who couldn't who couldn't afford it. So if that requires us going out, getting equipment donated, you know, raising money to work on these uh these registration fees uh, that are thousands of dollars, and then and, and help bring down the cost, uh, they all consider that doing my part. Yeah, we are gonna trip the guys from Richmond Hill though. Let's be fucking honest here. Like, fucking mommy and daddy got money. They got a fucking trust fund. I don't give a fuck. Fuck that. There you go. That's Cam's yeah, contribution. Fuck, no, fuck that. <laughs> That's Jesus it. Christ. Official. Heard it here first. <laughs> hey, I remember you getting traded to uh, to Buffalo. Like, mm-hmm. did you and Yaro like Halak? Did you guys travel together to Buffalo? And did he talk the entire yeah. time? Because can, can I mean, he talk? Oh, but he you was know, so Yaro, pissed, me, man. Me and Yaro, are good buddies. But yeah. first thing. I knew when we were getting on the plane, the first thing he said is, I ain't staying, so. <laughs> <laughs> and he stuck true to his word, man. And he oh, made... yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I think he got off the plane and on the plane. He was out of there the next day. <laughs> What's the difference there, though? Like, you know, like, who we talked to the other day about this, too? Uh, who we talked to uh, the other we, day? Brian Giotto, maybe? G- Gio, yeah. Like, there's, what's the, you, you played for a bunch of different teams. Like, what's the difference between a great organization and not not so great organization. I know I'm putting you on a spot right now, but there's some big fucking details in there. Well, I mean, I just, for my, I can only speak to my experience. And when I got there, they, uh, you know, they, they just hired Ted Nolan and yeah. the new coaching staff. Uh, Pat LaFontaine just left. Uh, d- uh, t- uh, Tim Murray was taken over and the whole word was they were, they were tanking. They were tanking for McDavid. So that's, 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 I got a guy and I was, I was there on a one-year contract and I kind of got caught from trade deadline to trade deadline. So I was kind of like an asset to them and the fix was in. And then, you know, as soon as that season ends, they fired that whole coaching staff. So, you know, I don't, you know, I, I can't knock Buffalo. Both, both my kids were born there. I, I had a great time playing there. It's another passionate fan base, but you know, as you can see, you know, you, you can see I call right now. He doesn't look too happy either. No, oh God, they I couldn't know. even get McDavid. They couldn't even do that right. They couldn't even get McDavid. I know. But, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget being in the hotel. I was with the team on the road. I'll never forget a player from Buffalo, Matt D'Agostini. <laughs> oh, God, Dags. Oh, Dags. <laughs> he sent me the a text. De- the, the deputy dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. He sent me a text. He said, something's going down, man. He said, they just pulled Ryan Miller off the ice. And then he said, I think St- Steve Ott, too. And, yep. and then, so, I... 
I remember putting it out there. Hey, Ryan Miller, Steve Ott pulled off the ice in Buffalo. It looks like a trade's going down. I had no idea it involved St. Louis. I thought the yeah. Blues were going to send me home for like breaking a trade. I didn't even know the Blues were involved. They should in have it. sent your ass home. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, obviously, uh, you know, it was you guys going back to Buffalo, man. But like just being traded as 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 a whole, like you've been through it a couple times, Stewie. What's that like? I mean, it's 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 tough. It's tough, but. You know, I'm sure you know. Jens knows. No, nobody feels sorry for you. you know, that's 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 for sure. You know, this this, this is a business, and uh, that's that's the that's that's the nature of the beast. So, uh, you know, I think the, the biggest advice I can get is, you know, try to try to hit the ground running when you do when you do get traded and get acclimated with uh, your new teammates. Yeah, it was really tough for me. I um, I got traded in my hometown, and um, all my ex girlfriends are waiting for me when I landed. It was a really <laughs> tough experience. It was a really tough experience. <laughs> <laughs> My buddies thought I was making like thirty million a year. I know. <laughs> I acted like it. Hey, tell us about your agent. You know, I've gotten to know you know Eustace King. Although he, he all of a sudden, Stewie, ever since you left left St. Louis, he doesn't he doesn't call me back as quick as, as he used to. But um, but is he the only African American agent in the NHLPA? Maybe there's others. You can fill us in with that. But how active do you expect him to be with what you guys are doing and and you know, what's your relationship like with him? No, it's been great. You know, uh, if you know, we, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's the only African American uh, NHL agent right now. And I was, uh, I was, I was just, I was his first client. So that, uh, that goes to tell you how much, uh, you know, I really believed in him. And uh, he's been, he's been a great mentor for me to, uh, during my whole career. And, uh, you know, just a quick backstory he, he, he worked at the league for, for 10 years with Gary Bettman. And uh, you know now he's a player agent side, so I think uh, you know every, all these all these little connections are going to come together and help us bridge this gap with the NHL. I hope so. Have you guys heard from Bettman? Uh, no, but we got a. Uh, we're going to be talking to Kim Davis here soon too with the NHL. So we got a. Uh, I think Zoom. That's the new big thing. Zoom. Oh fuck! So don't yeah. get me started, I mean, Stewie. You think Zoom? And- don't get me fucking started on Zoom. I look like <laughs> shit. I look like fucking shit on Zoom. I hate it. Oh, fucking every, terrible. Everybody, everybody, everybody cheers me because I sign on through my wife's account. So apparently my name's always Stewart. I guess. <laughs> All you gotta do is change the name, Stewie. It you says right Stuart. there. What's your name? Just put, just put your name. I'm in. A pimp daddy. How many kids do you have? You, you, you have three kids. How old are your kids now? Uh, my twins are six, and uh, my youngest is two and a half. So what? we're uh, we're busy over here, man. Were the twins born in St. Louis? Uh, uh, Buffalo. No, Buffalo. Buffalo. I knew just that. after just after I got traded, they were conceived, I guess, in St. Louis. In Dogtown. In, in Dogtown. <laughs> hey, it's better to be conceived at the Lake of the Ozarks like I was. That's why I'm. That's why I haven't done much. Uh, what do you? So I know you're busy. I, I, is this like a full time job? This alliance thing? Like what? Like is it just meetings right now? Do you not even know? What it really is going to come? Really no, come no, up. we got you know we got some objectives, and uh, you know we've uh, we've uh, our foundation is, uh, is just just about to be uh, just about to created. The website's going to be up and running, but uh, right now we're just uh, having lots of conversations and lots of meetings, and uh, you know we're uh, yeah we're just we're brainstorming, brainstorming heavy right now. But the uh, we got some action coming soon. So is it is it is this what you're going to do, or are you looking? Are you want to coach? Like what you you have so much hockey knowledge, man. You came through so much, like. People are going to listen to you, and you can do whatever the fuck you want. So is this going to be a full-time job? Or are you looking to do other shit, or are you just like, fuck it, I got three kids, and I want to chill? No, I mean, uh, you know, once I once I do shut it down, I definitely want to take some family time. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a reason why there's seven of us on the board here, you know, and once hockey starts up, we're, we're, we're all going to be pretty busy here. But uh, we're all passionate about this project, and uh, we're, we're, we're all going to be active, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, making trips to kid practices or – you know, the one thing we talked about is starting a hotline or uh, where, yeah. where these kids where these kids can reach out to us and, you know, really have direct contact to or we're going through things that, that we can relate to. But, uh, yeah, we're all we're all going to be hands-on with this thing. What about Colin Kaepernick? What was that interaction like with you guys? You know what? I wasn't even ex- – I got – I like, I was another Zoom call. I picked up the Zoom, and there he is. I'm sitting there kind of like a super fan. Like, you know, you got you to warn me before you're going to see Cap, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's intimidating. Was he cool, though? Yeah, Was, yeah. He, was he cool? Well, yeah, so, yeah. But, you know, he was, he, was, he, was, he was great. He was there just to lend his support and uh, kind of explained everything he went to and what to expect. And he just he just really preached, uh, preached, preached unity and staying together and – Really, really having the same message. So it was, uh, it was really motivational talking to him. Andy Strickland and Cam Jansen yeah. here for you for GadgetBuyback.com. Yeah. Gadget Lab, they got a store here locally if you're in St. Louis, 5541 Telegraph Road. Here's the deal. You got an old phone, maybe a cracked tablet. Maybe it's perfect, but it's a little bit older. Mm. Turn it in right now. www.gadgetbuyback.com. 
Upgrade your devices, phones, computers, watches. Anything. Doesn't have to be Apple either. No. Get those tablets turned in. Again, www.gadgetbuyback.com, 877-772-8880. Now back to the interview. Yeah. What do you think players will do when they return? I mean, I mean, like, like, could you see yourself kneeling during the National Anthem? Is that something you guys have discussed, Stewie? We haven't, I haven't discussed it at all, but... I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of things once we come back. I think, uh, you know, the spotlight's on the America on America right now. And, you know, if you ask me my opinion personally, you, I, I think you, obviously Kaepernick was right. You know, you can see the things that are going on and the injustices are going on. And I think really people are really trying to – are really, really understanding what, what, what he was needing for. I don't think it was to, you know, to, to disrespect the flag. I think he's, you know, he's trying to bring awareness to the injustice. And, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, we got a full, full scope on it now. What's the biggest – What's it? so is it is it in the inner city communities? And I know you came from Scarborough, which is hardcore. You know, if you came from where you say Richmond Hill or something, it's hard to even answer this question because you know a lot of uh, people from North County and North County St. Louis is very very difficult. What's the biggest thing in these inner cities that needs to change? And I mean, is it police brutality? Is it you know uh, having kids out of wedlock? Like, is it everything combined? Like, what's your take on this? I mean, that's 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 it's it's a tough one, but you know, I think. I think it just it's 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 an everyone problem. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think I think you know no one's no one no one's really comfortable having these conversations or or people don't understand. You know, it's everyone's really sensitive these days, and you don't want to you don't want to say the wrong thing. But you know, you can see there's there's you know living in St. Louis. I knew I I, I realized it right away. There was you know there's there was two different walks of life. Oh. And I, you, you know, and you you, you notice time. that within a, within three blocks of your house, you know, you're coming out of Central West End, and you're you're in a different part of town. So that's, uh, you know, you you know, there's 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 two different Americas, that's for sure. Any similarities to inner city St. Louis versus Scarborough? I mean, are they are they still different? Like, give me your take on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we grew up in 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 government low low income housings, and uh, you know, our, our 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 little townhouse growing up was was maybe 800 square feet we we had nine people living in there so just imagine that <laughs> hey um the gun crime's not there though right in canada no i mean no i mean no not 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 like the states even though i think toronto is on their is on i think close to their 30th or 40th murder this this summer toronto toronto is really up there that in, in the murder rate right now i think it's higher than new york and chicago damn yeah. In, Chicago? in Chicago, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chicago just had 18 well, last I, day, I, yesterday. I don't know after last weekend i think yeah. 18 people got killed on saturday yeah. right oh, in chicago. yeah yeah, Chicago's yeah. hardcore, man. So, um, hey, I gotta ask you this because I never asked you, but um, like you went to the KHL and then you came right back. You didn't stay there very long. You never played a game. Oh, they said right. they were like looking for you. Like, oh, what's the real I, story I there? Signed, I signed in the KHL. I didn't go there. I signed. I signed. But um, yeah, when it was when it was time to go, it just it, it didn't feel right. And uh, uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't get on the flight. And uh, yeah, I guess they. I guess everything got lost in translation, and they said I was missing. But you know, I was at home. So I'm sorry, I'm laughing. You, you, I don't fucking blame you. You needed Vladdy. You needed Vladdy to translate for you. Well, you should have got Vladdy oh, well, to translate. Well, because people were calling me. They're like, "Is everything okay? Where are you?" I'm like, "I just dropped the kids off at school." I remember <laughs> that, Stewie. What are you they were, talking about? They were losing their fucking. Mind. You went over to Nottingham too, where I played, didn't you? Did you play over there? Yeah, yeah I had. Uh, I had a great time over there. That's pretty cool. Eh? I had to bring your jersey down from the rafters there, Jazz. The Why'd, <laughs> Why'd you bring it down? Why'd you bring it down? It just got put up. <laughs> oh, fucking that! Fun. It was uh, the guys are awesome over there, though, man. Like, did you have a good time with the guy? Right, treat no. you, was it good? Yeah, it was okay. great. Cool, cool little city there, and yeah, uh, you know the downtown with the cobblestone, and oh, man. you know the, the fans are a great support. You know the the bus the bus trips to Wales were a little were a little too much in Scotland, but you know besides <laughs> besides that, it was all right. Stewie, how long you want to play here? Are you going to be try to be a TV star like your brother, or what? What are Ooh. you going to do? I think I got a better face for TV. That's that's for sure, boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, I I, I I don't know. I got I can see myself doing a few things after hockey. That's for sure. How long you want to play for? You got another uh, year I mean, in you? Yeah, for sure. I think for sure. I you want to uh, fucking deal with those guys in the American League, though? Like, well, if that's, you, if, that's, you look at the, the you know the the outside looking in right now. Who knows if they're even going to be in American League next year? But you know as where I am right now in my career, I got nothing else to prove. But if there's an opportunity that does present itself and it sounds interesting, you know, I, I'd be ready. That's for sure. Well, it'd probably have to be overseas, though, Stewie. Like, you want to fucking grind it, Lehigh Valley. 
you still got fucking guys that are going to fucking tap on your door and want to fight. Like, is it fucking worth it? You got so much shit you could do after hockey. It's like, God damn, just start your no. new career, right? No, I hear you. I hear you. And that's, uh, you know, that's a bridge you got to cross when you get there. But, you know, it's, 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 it's good to have cha- it gets, it's, it's good to have options, but you know it's, you. It's, it worked out. It worked out for you. How was how was how was it for you, Jets? Trans, translating to life after hockey was it hard or was it pretty easy? He's well, been, uh, he still I, doesn't know. Oh, I don't have no idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's still, know, he's still on Chesterfield. Hey, hey, fuck, hey, hey listen, listen, Stewie. He plays like pickup hockey. He still thinks he's in the show. I like, kick the fuck out he, of everybody. He gets there three hours early. He stick handles like it's like, dude. I'm like, the best hockey player in St. Louis right now when it comes to alumni skates, and that is a fact. <laughs> It's a fact, better than, Stewie. Better than Phil McRae? Is Phil McRae out there? Or no, no? He's, he's, coming, he's, he's coming on my now. show tomorrow. He's coming on my show tomorrow. <laughs> he's he, talked to him today. He's a tell good... Him I, tell him I said what's up. That's my boy. He's a great dude. But yeah, we... Uh, no, the, Mike, it was, it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty easy. I went over there and played Nottingham, and then I got some radio offers. But then getting into a new bit, you know, radio career was very difficult. I didn't even know how to fucking talk about the blues. I didn't even know how to do anything. Or ask questions or anything like that. And you so know what, Stewie? He, he, doesn't, he can't say fuck on the radio either, so he no. doesn't know how to do that. Oh, man. So he, does, so he, does, so he doesn't say anything then. He's just, no. <laughs> I'm a fucking mute, and that's why I got so many listeners. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. Stewie, man, I'm just glad you came on, dude. We appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it, it man. Very you are, much. You're the real And girl. you know what? I will say this about you. I was watching this, um, the, the little documentary they had for the Flyers last year during yeah. training camp. Yeah. And just seeing how you, like, you didn't even have a contract. You're there on a tryout. You're a veteran, obviously proven guy. You played over 600 games, like you said. But the way you treated the young kids and to have that captured on camera, I just hope teams see that, man, because there is a value to having guys like you in the organization and in the dressing room, man, because, you know, just seeing that and and me seeing it firsthand and now for, you know, other people to see it on a TV show, never obviously was, you know, it wasn't inside the locker room with you, but you know what I'm saying, man. So I I was glad you got that chance, you know. Uh, thanks, Strix, man. Appreciate it a lot, man. You, you know, you've been a big supporter of me my whole career, and uh, you know our, you know, our friendship's dear to me. Thank you, buddy. Well, he was talking shit about you about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I don't right. know if you heard oh, that. That's, right. that's all right. We got, that kind of, we got that kind of relationship. We can shit on you. Know? Stewie, right. you're the man. I want you to come back to St. Louis and play in some alumni games. we got a bunch of shit coming up here, so uh, I'm going to give you the call, man. I want you to be on my line, and maybe Andy will make hey, the team. We'll and, see. And anything you need for this alliance, man, I mean, yeah. honestly, reach out. Let us know. I want to be in. I want to be part of the alliance, actually. We're but, your St. Louis conduit. But, you know, being involved with youth hockey here, especially, like, anything uh, St. Louis related, man, hit us up. We'd love to get involved with that, too. Perfect. Thanks, boys. Love you, buddy. Talk soon, bud. Sure. Right on. Right, See you. That was Chris Stewart. Yeah, baby. So Big when boy. he came on board, man, he just dropped you down to the fourth line, right? You just you weren't going to. Oh, be was I on the be... first line at that time? I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember when he first idiot. got to St. Great Louis? Great chirp. Great chirp. When was. he just kind of like yeah. went crazy. I mean, he was scoring goals left and right. Yeah, he was. He was. I think he had back to back seasons with twenty eight goals. Something it was like weird that. though, because EJ was my boy, and uh, yeah, I, I remember being on the plane when that all went down, and uh, it was but, weird. But you I know love what, EJ. Kevin Shack, we're gonna get Shady on here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the coolest dudes nice ever guy in the world. Yeah, he's like a guy that you'd like go to high school with and like be friends with. You know, that's what yeah. Kevin Shattenkirk yeah. reminds me of. He's just a good dude. But Chris Stewart, man, um, for a guy who could score and make plays. Uh, he was he's tough man he he, he, he could have been like a heavy if he wanted to yeah no you know he's tough and his, his brother was tough too big lefty he played for Kingston you know I remember playing mm-hmm. against him as a captain um, cool family went through a tough time mm-hmm. they came out of it they got tortured probably takes care of his kids. family too man took care of their family went through a bunch of racism growing growing up and I I get that they sucked it up they fucking dealt with it. And now they got 20 in the bank and they're fucking chilling. And now they're in charge of a big part of the NHL. And, and like, it's just a cool thing to see. Yeah, it's no, cool. I know. Because they're good people. They're good people. And they know what's right for the hockey community. And I so like they're it. doing their thing, man. And they're yeah. going to figure it out as they go in terms of how they truly want to impact people, yeah. impact kids, and impact you know what else the community, I like? all that. They don't, they're like, oh, poor me, poor me. No, no. They're like, no. I fucking dealt with shit. And I fucking sucked it up. And I'm a man, mm-hmm. and it helped me now. Now I can do whatever the fuck I, I want. I just like the confidence that he brought to the table. I love it. He dude. was like, dude, this I love is, it. let me just break it down. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing, baby. Like, don't read too much into it or more into it than you need to. Don't feel sorry this for me. This is what it yeah. is. But I don't think everybody who's been doing these interviews Not has, even, has oh been able my. to convey the message poor me, as poor well me, as he has. Me. No doubt. I thought I thought that was really, really strong by There's Chris There's a Stewart, way to man. do it, too. You can't just be like, there's a reason why I didn't play. because no, no. Is that the reason? No, no. And Stewie's like, no. I still made it, be- and I went mm-hmm. through it. 
and it made me a bigger, tougher person. Everybody's story is their it's own completely story, different. though. No, man. I get that. It's, it's their I own get story. It. But he's so I, I respect it right. all these guys for what they're doing and the fact that they're coming together, and uh, even getting Colin Kaepernick involved and yeah. whatever, man, yeah. is uh, yeah, that's cool. So we're kind of like late to the party with some of this discussion. I know a lot of people have been doing those interviews. We did that interview with Chris Stewart like over a week and a half ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a long time ago. But we just dropped it. Yeah, we got to do it now. So. Fuck, yeah. we got we got big dogs cruising around, man. We got to separate us. We got an order. I mean, fuck. We got to stay in what order. What do we do? Stewie was a fucking man, we though. We got a method we love to the him. madness. We love but you, that's Stewie. not the only reason why we wanted to have him on, either, man. I want to talk about his career, his life, his upbringing. He's still fucking and, grinding it. And oh, I'm like, man. dude, retire already. Dude, and I, I mentioned this at the end of the interview. They had a... Uh, like a show, kind of like a behind the scenes, like yeah. an HBO 24 7 type yeah. thing. And I think it was on NHL Network. And, you know, they followed the Philadelphia Flyers during training camp. And you just, got, he was featured in it prominently. I know he was. And I he ended up, it. he was there in tryout. Yeah. Ended up getting a contract. But just seeing how he interacted with the young kids, man. Yeah, he's a Pulling fucking... them aside. Like, do not, and I don't think every team values it as much as you need to. Like, you better have true veteran leadership if you want to win thank you. in the National Hockey League, okay? that's Thank you, because that's what helped me uh, play three more years in the NHL, just because I was just good in the locker room. Honest to God, you, just, it, you need somebody to keep the locker room happy and fun, everybody together, two guys fighting. I'm going to be the conduit on that and be funny with both of you, mm-hmm. so you both – I know it sounds goofy, but that's such the – it is so – you can't have everybody How like each other. How many tough guys – Aren't good in the locker room, though. Well, if you you better be scoring twenty, you better be scoring twenty. What do you mean? I'm saying most most tough guys are usually pretty good teammates. You better if you're a tough guy and you're not good in the locker room. Oh, you, you better, better be scoring, scoring fucking I something. I got you. You get my drift? Yeah, yeah. You better be knocking better cats out to the left table. and yeah. right, mm-hmm. or else what the fuck you doing? But well, get a guy that doesn't knock you out. That's good in the locker room. That just hits guys. But do you know of too many guys though who played that role? A couple who guys. They're guys. guys like like because you know what you when you're young. Like I was 20, 21 when I came in. Mm-hmm. I could have got really cocky, although I kind of did. But not in a locker room. Anybody you, put, you truly didn't like who you played against that you fought? Not really. Come on. Not really. Really. Me and Barchi went out a little bit here You know and he there. was working for uh, Buffalo. Buffalo? Got, got, I didn't know that. I had no idea and either. And Commissaric. Everybody's so concerned. Dang. And Mike Commissaric, I know. Everyone's so well, like worried about the Buffalo Sabres. I'm like, dude, let me just say this. Can the team be shitty? Well, let me say can this. Can the organization be shitty? They're shitty every year. And I can say this because I've got deep family roots in Buffalo. And so I hear about it from family and whatever. But they've been bad every year. You had one star player essentially ask out who came here to win a Stanley Cup. Now their franchise player is being know, critical. Man. You've got former players coming on this podcast, breaking down the issues with the culture mm. inside the organization. I like, know. there's a problem there. Dude. I know. And so if you're going to fix the problem, you might as well clean house. Clean it. Clean 22 house. people. I mean, I don't like to see people lose their jobs. How about Kevin Adams had to fire him? <laughs> I know. He's never even been a GM before. <laughs> they hire him, and his first job is to go and fire the guy who's the current GM. Fuck. How uncomfortable is that? Why is it his job to do that, uh, by Well, the way? because now he's in charge, so yeah, you got to be I the know, big boy and go do it. I know, but I usually know, I the, the president probably should Just get it done, done before that. he's fucking elected here, yeah, please. Yeah, exactly. You. Fire the guy and then hire the fuck new one. Fuck, did I hit him hard one time in a playoff? Did you? Oh, fuck. Are we sure you're t- you're talking about the right guy? No, Normally you get this stuff wrong. No, you know? he's played for Carolina. It was the fourth game in the playoffs. I remember. I caught him coming up the wall. Boom. Now he's See a GM. Ya. So I don't know. I mean, I just didn't know Buffalo. Like, I mean, it's almost like the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like everyone's just going crazy. I just feel. If, I feel like if this happened in a, to a different organization, like, nobody would even be talking about it. No. But everyone's you? so upset, and like it just I'm not. hit people to the core, and they're like, "Oh my god, poor Buffalo." Like, dude, f- change it up. Fucking Again, figure it out. Until you get it right. No shit. I mean, everyone's like, oh, they just made a... They can't just keep changing it. Yeah, you yeah, can. You can. <laughs> until you get it right. And once it's right, you're right. You and know you're what? fine. You're bringing coin in. You're packing it in anyway. Who cares? Exactly. Fucking get it right. Clean house. Clean up. It's not like St. Louis where you have to have the right product for people to come in here. Now it's a little different. But in Buffalo, they're coming no matter what. So figure it the fuck out. I didn't you know fire everybody was so concerned. Do it. Jesus so Christ. concerned about the Buffalo Sabres. Well, figure it out. You got you star players just terrible. crushing the culture. You're terrible. You want to know what I mean? Here's another thing. No, 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 no. Wait, huh. Andy, can I say something? Yeah. Sorry, sorry yeah, to yeah, interrupt yeah. you. You just yeah. smell time. I'm going to do it to you. Don Cherry had a nice 
week. We talked about this on my radio show. Mm-hmm. Buffalo not only the worst team in the league. Honestly, the worst fucking mm-hmm. team in the league. And franchise players just crushing the team. The worst fucking team. You're last in hits and you're last in fights. You're down by fucking six and you lose in hits. Fuck you. Oh, here you go again. Pussy. Now you're getting ultimate. Uh, no, I'm now just you're saying. getting aggressive again. I'm like, I didn't mean like that. Fine. <laughs> Screw you, pansy. No. You're losing you're losing every game and you're losing in hits too. Where's the emotion? Hey, listen. Where is it? Ralph Kruger. Get on with who's yourself. the head coach there. He's like a uh CEO, like a business CEO who's running a hockey team. Honestly, he could the way it's been described to me, he could go run Get a, aggressive. a business, okay? Get aggressive. And he's kind of like a soccer coach too, who's also a hockey hockey coach. The way this screams to me is that and then you have the GM saying, I'm going to learn from oh, the Jesus coaches, Christ. the head coach and his coaching staff. How oh, often do you hear God. a GM say that about a head coach and his coaching staff? I feel like they're almost turning, and no one's saying this. I know. They're turning this org- organization over to Ralph Kruger. Hey, why don't you just get... Well, not, not to Kevin Adams. They're turning it over to Ralph Kruger. Why don't you get Mike Keenan involved? He'll do it. He knows how to run a GM job. Hey, and, and I'm just saying, nobody's up. talking about that. That's what they're doing. They're turning this thing over to him. And I would assume they've had a lot of conversations Andy. between him and the owners. And I bet you he had some influence in some of these decisions that were made. It's Andy, my guess. If I'm a GM. Educated guess, but it's my guess. I'm a GM. And I got to take orders from the coach. That's not right. It's not right. I'm a GM. And I'm taking orders from the coach. And I'm learning from the coach. What the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? I'm a GM. I tell you what to do. You're telling me I'm learning from you? Know, what the fuck? Well, that's what happens when you bring in a guy on. who's a first-time general Whatever. manager. Whatever. Good luck. Working with a, a coach. Shit. You're an East Coast. Who's been around for a long time. Anyway. All right. All right. This is Chris Stewart. This was the Camistrick Podcast. Love episode number 49. We're live at the normal brand as we are each oh, and every uh, baby. broadcast. We appreciate Conrad and everybody for hooking that up. Sexy bastard. As always, this show is brought to you by CarShield and CarShield.com. Again, hook it up. Just like Cam did. Oh, my 800 God, they hooked me up. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM. As embarrassing as that is, you'll save 10%. C-A-M. Not for women. And, of course, gadgetbuyback.com. Get rid of your old shitty phone. Get a new shit. one. Stop being a Hoosier. Okay? And, as you got a, a cracked company? screen. As a company, Like too? I do. Get yourself Andy, a you're embarrassing phone. the chemistry. chemistry. <laughs> Take it there, please. And if you're a company... You could have all those electronics, and they're getting a little bit old. Just five years in, soon they'll buy it back from you. Yes. It's simple, simple, simple. All right, 877-772-8880. Bellman.com. Don't just think new. No. Think pre-owned. Yeah. They've got over 125 gently used, beautiful, beautiful yeah. pre-owned cars on the lot right now. Several under $11,000. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Go in there and get yourself a new car. they got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Buick. GMC, GMC Cadillac. Yeah. And get myself a new Escalade. <laughs> okay? Sure you are. We're going to hook that. I'll take a used one of those, too. Used, You'll take used anything Escalade. they'll fucking give you. They're gonna get, you're going to get a fucking... You're gonna, you might get a Buick whatever the fuck. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Hook it up. Tell Dan Bellman we say what up. Yes. Also, Cope24. Oh, Renee. The Cope experience. Cope24.com. Changing our parenting experience. One family at a time, man. They yeah, are man. flat out getting it done. Great All right, people. Cam Jansen, great job today. Thank you, buddy. I right, hope Appreciate everybody it. enjoyed. Part of my language. Chris Stewart, again, hook it up. Be sure to subscribe, please. Yeah. Go subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, at Cam and Strick Pod. Facebook. And also be looking out for our brand new video clips that yeah, we're putting baby. out. We just put one out the other day. Great response so far. Many more of those. Check them hats to out. Follow. Oh, yeah, we got some hats Check those hats out. Too, Check those hats out oh. we're wearing. Oh, the normal That's brand normal hats. brand, baby. Yeah. Right yeah. there. No doubt. All right, until next time, this has been the Cam and Strict Podcast. Thanks, guys.